Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about the AMC Real Value Indicator, the AMC Earnings, Bonding Pressure, and much more in this video. First, we're taking a look at this. So Cinemark has not had earnings beat quarter after quarter, yet of course they're sitting at $29 a share. Thanks for letting us know AMC's price ain't nowhere near its real value. Same industry, yet AMC does it a million times better. Now, this is something we talked about yesterday. We compared the price of Cinemark, IMAX, and AMC, and their performance in terms of stock prices. But you can see also here, as of June 2024, Cinemark had a total debt of 3.41 million. And then furthermore, as you can see, total revenue for three months ended June 30, 2024, decreased 22.1% to 734.2 million. So this is what we talked about. Firstly, we saw that in yesterday's comparison, that in the whole theater industry, it's going up. And we saw IMAX and Cinema going up where AMC is going down. And we talked about why the reason for that is. But furthermore to understand, is that the very fact that it's going up, it shows that people are investing and it shows that if people are in fact not buying AMC and buying to others, it looks like they're making the wrong decision. Just looking at the fundamentals, we are seeing AMC doing it a million times better. But again, it comes down to the ultimate reason like we talked about, that retail owns AMC and the institutions own Cinemark, hence why Cinemark is going up. And so for people trying to understand in terms of what is the best investment to make, well, do your own due diligence, of course, do your own research. But when you do a simple comparison between the earnings of AMC and Cinemark, and you can understand you know, what it's happening right now. And you can see, once again, it is vital to remember that nobody has woke up to sell AMC again this morning. The downward pressure algorithm was specifically designed to mentally break retail into capitulation. The display share price is nothing more than a complete distortion from the abusive powers of the market maker. They still all buying pressure daily via payment for order flow and house it in non-reporting Citadel Connect and Virtue dark pools. Then they sell fake leverage and not real AMC QSIP locates directly to the lit exchange. The unfathomable amount of FTDs is supporting evidence these terrorists never own the leverage they sold us in attempts to bankrupt another company. The world is aware of all of this. And so this is what we talked about. When you see that Cinemark is going up, when you see that IMAX is going up, you understand that this industry is a good investment um, potential right now. But then when you see that AMC is the one going down in the midst of all of this, it makes people think that maybe AMC is not the right investment. And that's the mental strategy they want to apply them. They want to firstly scare the people who are already holding on to the AMC shares to obviously get them to sell. And secondly, they want to make sure that no one who's new and wants to invest in the industry picks AMC as their top choice. Therefore, not giving the buy pressure for AMC. Because one thing in terms of understanding this is that they do internalize the buying pressure therefore when people do buy the prices doesn't go up and so you may be wondering that buying is useless well something they have to understand is that whilst they are internalizing this also remember every time people buy it's buying the synthetic shares and you make these market makers create more synthetic shares and when that happens when the time comes they obviously have to cover these synthetic shares as well and that's the power of buying whilst by buying you may not see the price actually reflecting the buy volume it actually affects these hedge funds and short sellers as always none of this financial advisor do take out a of some make sure do your own due diligence and research furthermore this is just one of the antiques you know we are seeing the strategies that they use once again, uh, always the same number, 3 million shares at 0 0.0001. And you guys can see again coming in, the spoofing orders for AMC, another 3 million shares at 0 0.0001. This is something that we see all the time. And this is what we talked about. They're using these strategies to manipulate and suppress the price of AMC. And ask yourself this, why would these big institutions constantly spoof AMC and not any other shares that are out there? The only ones they really spoof, you know, AMC, GME, or any other that's extremely shorted. Why would they do this if they want to try and save themselves? The only reason why they need to suppress AMC is obviously because every time AMC goes up, they lose billions and billions of dollars, and they are afraid of that. Hence why we are seeing the spoofing, and hence why when you do the comparison between the earnings and you do the comparison between the performance of the two stocks, you understand why AMC is going down and why Cinemark is going up. Furthermore, another thing to understand, Q3 2024 domestic box office ended at 2.665 billion. Domestic box office at Q3 2023 ended at 2.650 billion. AMC theaters Q3 2023 revenues 
1.4 billion and profit plus 12.3 million. I think AMC is a much stronger company now, less debt. I'm guessing profitable Q3 plus 101 million. So this is obviously a comparison. And this is just what we talked about again in terms of the structure, in terms of the management of AMC and how they are improving. Now, AMC has done a lot more this year. We talked about the restructure of debt. We also talked about the Fed changing rates has obviously saved millions of dollars. We've saved over $10 million in terms of interest payment in just one year. We're also seeing how AMC are obviously paying off the debt like we talked about and how AMC is improving. In June, we had the best ever EBITDA month. So understanding that, we can obviously see how even though the box office is still similar number to Q3 of 2023, but AMC is very likely to actually make even more money this time. And so we are in a situation where even with a lower box office, we are still able to make money better than we were before. Now, that doesn't mean that we are going to get, you know, a lower box office because we are seeing it improve, but it just goes to say and lets us understand how well AMC actually is doing. And, you know, exactly these are facts, which is why if you haven't figured out by now as to why the price of AMC is so low, you need to do your research. And just like what I said in terms about how it takes us now less box office to make more money, the short and hedge funds also realize that as well. And they're scared. And that's why they need to make sure that they can suppress AMC to hopefully in their eyes bring into bankruptcy. Because again, what we talked about, the only way for these guys to get out of this whole situation, the trap they've dug themselves in, is for AMC to go bankrupt. So they are hoping and wishing that AMC goes bankrupt. But when they see the fundamentals report like this, then they understand that there is no chance of AMC actually going to bankruptcy. No one, absolutely no one can stop us. And yes, they can delay, but we ain't giving up after four years. What do you mean give up after I just bought more last week Friday? How could you ever win against the pissed off eight population? Thank you to all the DDAs for keeping everyone informed, LFG. So this is also firstly just saying to everyone who's you know sharing, whether it's tweets, whether it's my videos or any other videos, just information about everything. You know, you are supporting the community. You are helping everyone understand what is going on. I see my comment sections all the time in terms of about how someone's saying, I didn't know about this one fact. I didn't know about that one fact. And you know, those are the facts that keeps everyone in, that allows everyone to understand what is happening. When you make an investment, you obviously want to know the most about this. And in this case for AMC, there's so much more to know about this because it isn't just in terms of looking at the finance sheets, looking at the fundamentals, because you are looking at all these other factors about billion dollar fine uh, institutions trying to manipulate AMC. And it's understanding that it lets us understand, you know, why is our investment doing this? Why despite having such good earnings, why are we seeing the price go down? And going into the future, are we going to continue seeing good earnings? Well, the answer for that is obviously very likely to be yes, as we're seeing how AMC is obviously improving. Now, over here, AMC will pop, but not yet. It's just accumulation time. The algos are very hard to overwhelm, needs a huge buy side imbalance. Maybe DJT profit comes to AMC. So we are just going to talk about in terms of the accumulation time. We always know that people are constantly buying to AMC. You can see here from Robert M who just said they bought more last week, Friday. And this isn't just the one person, you know, we are seeing multiple people continuously buying and um, down cost average their, their investments. And that's what we are going to continuously see. And like we talked about, because by buying, you may not actually affect the price because it's internalized, because it's routed into the dark pool. But by buying, you're forcing the shorts to create more synthetics. And when it comes to the time that we do overwhelm the algos, that we do overturn the algos, they'll have to pay for the billions of synthetics that they have obviously created. And that will be the worrying part for the short sellers. Now we're seeing surging US repo activity likely exacerbating funding pressure and this is what we are looking at now we talked about in terms of the illiquidity problems that's going on in the market in the whole economy right now we're seeing all of this we're seeing banks like we can see here federal reserve is currently supporting bank of america ahead of earnings which will allow them to have a bullish earnings after earnings the btfp liquidity runoff continues and will run out very soon a major bank will fall soon so bank of america is kind of just the one that's indicating what's happening in the market right now they're struggling with their T-bills. They're struggling with their investments. They're running low on liquidity. They're facing illiquidity problems. They're not the only one, but they're the one that are in the spotlight right now. And just like we talked about here, how the repo activity is likely exacerbating funding pressure. You understand that that is something that is truly happening in the market. And this 
is, like we talked about, ultimately what's going to affect these short sellers. They rely on liquidity. They rely on banks. They rely on the funding they get from the banks. Now, for Citadel, whose prime lender is, of course, Bank of America, and seeing how Bank of America is failing, you can understand how that will affect Citadel. For others who rely on other banks, will also face the same problem. And not to mention, these short sellers themselves are also facing the illiquidity problem. And that is ultimately what's going to get to them. That's what's going to crumble them. And when that happens, a fire sale of assets, the cover of shorts, everything will be happening. And you guys, thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you guys next time.